Hello, my fellow minor league nerds, and welcome to the newest franchise history episode. This episode is about the Schaumburg Flyers, who played in the Independent Northern League from 1999 until 2010. They were covered on our old Throwback Thursday Cap of the Day series, making this our first expanded and recut version of that series. The village of Schaumburg, Illinois, which is located about 28 miles northwest of downtown Chicago, was awarded a Northern League franchise in May 1998. Baseball lifer John Dittrich, who sadly passed away last summer, and Rich Ehrenreich headed up a group of 20 owners and were looking to build an expansion team. But in September of that year, it was announced that they would purchase the Thunder Bay Whiskey Jacks and would relocate them to Schaumburg Baseball Stadium, later renamed Alexian Field, now known as Wintrust Field, which was built in time for the 1999 season for $19 million. Dittrich served as the team's general manager, a role he held for three years with the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks before joining the Flyers. Over 2,000 entries were submitted for the team's name, with four submitting the Flyers. The name references the Schaumburg Regional Airport, which is located next to the stadium. During games, you can watch non-commercial planes fly overhead while taking off and landing from its single runway. White Sox legend Ron Kittle was named the team's first manager, staying in the role until resigning following the 2001 season. Greg Hibbard, who played for both the White Sox and the Cubs, was the team's first pitching coach, and former major leaguer Mike Marshall served as a player coach. Their first game was played at home on Friday, May 28th, a 6 to nothing victory over the St. Paul Saints before a standing room only crowd. In their first season, they finished in first place with an overall record of 44 and 42, winning both the first and second half East Division titles. They unfortunately, though, were swept by the Fargo Moorhead Red Hawks in three games in the first round of the postseason. In their first season, they drew 236,476 fans for an average of 5,499 per game, the third most in the league. Outfielder Jim Rushford was the first flyer to reach the major leagues, playing 23 games for the Milwaukee Brewers in 2002. Alberto Castillo, who would spend four seasons in the major leagues between 2008 and 2011, led the pitching staff with 97 innings pitched, going 7-5 with a 4.27 ERA. Jamie Lapicolo led the team with a 332 batting average, 119 hits, 15 home runs, and 78 RBIs. During that 1999 season, 96-year-old former Negro League star Ted Double Duty Radcliffe threw one pitch for the Flyers against Matt Falcon of the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks, becoming the oldest person to ever appear in a professional baseball game. The Flyers would make the playoffs three more times in 2003, 2004, and 2006, with 2004 being their most successful season. They would win the first half division title with a 31-17 and record. They defeated the Kansas City T-Bones three games to two in the first round, but fell to the St. Paul Saints in five, despite being up two games to one at one point. The team's attendance did slip over the years, but they consistently drew over 200,000 a season until 2010, when they only drew 172,732. After the 2005 season, the Northern League lost four teams, as the Lincoln Salt Dogs, the St. Paul Saints, Sioux City Explorers, and Sioux Falls Canaries all left to form the American Association with five teams from the Central Baseball League. In the second half of the 2006 season, 
The Flyers and MSN partnered to create Fan Club Reality Baseball, which gave fans behind-the-scenes access to the Flyers in the form of an online reality show. Fans were also able to select the team's starting lineups for each game. It was an abysmal half for the Flyers, as they went 15-33 and after winning the first half division title with a 31-17 and record. They were knocked out in the first round of the playoffs by the Gary South Shore Railcats in five games. The 2009 season saw former Major Leaguer Felix Jose join the team at 44 years of age. He had a pretty decent season hitting 306 with 12 doubles, 7 home runs, and 39 RBIs. That season also saw the Flyers play the Chicago Bandits, a national pro fast pitch softball team in what was dubbed as the Battle of the Sexes in front of 8,918 fans. The game was played under softball rules with the Bandits winning 4-2. The Flyers opened the 2010 season playing under the temporary name the Schaumburg Pilots. They played under the name as a way to support the Chicago Blackhawks during their 2010 Stanley Cup run, using it until the Hawks defeated the Philadelphia Flyers in six games. The team played what turned out to be its last game on September 5th, 2010 against Winnipeg. They were looking to sweep the Gold Eyes to end the season on a high note and were on the verge of doing so before Winnipeg was able to come from behind late in the game and win 4-3. Following the 2010 season, the Northern League fell apart as the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, Kansas City T-Bones, Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks, and Gary South Shore Railcats all left to join the American Association, while the Joliet Jackhammers, who were sold and renamed the Joliet Slammers, and the Rockford Riverhawks joined the Frontier League. On November 18th, the Flyers and the Lake County Fielders, the last two remaining teams in the Northern League, who were also both owned by Rich Ehrenreich, announced that they would join the new North American Baseball League, which was formed by merging with the Golden Baseball League and the United Baseball League. Unfortunately for the Flyers, they would never play another game, and the league itself would fold after only two seasons. In August of 2010, the operating company for the Flyers, Schaumburg Professional Baseball LLC, was stripped of its business registration by the state of Illinois for non-payment of sales taxes and withholding taxes. It was reported that the Flyers were heavily in debt and Ehrenreich had been looking to sell the team all year long to concentrate on the Lake County fielders. If you don't know the story of the fielders, it's an amazingly messed up one that we plan on covering at some point. Ehrenreich had also fallen behind on his rent payments to the village of Schaumburg and the Schaumburg Park District, co-owners of Alexian Field. All his attempts to sell the teams to poorly vetted buyers fell through. Still intending to join the Northern League for its inaugural season in 2011, the Flyers were served with an eviction notice from Alexian Field on February 24th with the team owing $900,000 in back rent going back to the 2007 season. A Cook County judge terminated the lease and ordered the Flyers to pay the village and the Park District $551,828.92 in back rent. The eviction was made final on March 6th. The Flyers' assets were auctioned off in April 2011, bringing an end to the franchise. And as far as I can tell, the back rent has never been paid. Schaumburg, though, wouldn't go long without a team. In 2011, Eleanor Remus, owner of the Joliet Slammers, was awarded a lease to Alexian Field. He intended for the team to play in the American Association. In August of that year, though, shortly after signing the deal, 
he sold the team to Pat Salvi, owner of the Gary South Shore Railcats in the American Association. Selvi did not want to have a conflict of interest by having two teams in the same league, so he moved Schaumburg over to the Frontier League. Under Oremus's ownership, a Name the Team contest was held, with the winners being the Maulers. That's M-A-L-L-E-R-S, referencing Woodfield Mall, one of the largest malls in the country, which is located in Schaumburg. The name was never made official. Selvi, after purchasing the team, held another Name the Team contest, with the Boomers coming out as the winner. They've been a rather successful team under his ownership, winning four Frontier League titles. Well, my fellow minor league nerds, that's going to do it for this episode. I want to thank everyone for all your support in watching the videos on YouTube and downloading the podcast version. Stay safe. And as always, be sure to never stop supporting minor league baseball and never stop learning about minor league baseball history. This podcast is part of the Curve Brand Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curve Brand Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna Tomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey, everyone. It's Eric from the great state of Kansas. This is Johnny from the New Orleans Baby Cakes Memorial Museum. And we are the Earn Fun Average Podcast. Where we talk to a variety of guests about their love of baseball and have fun doing it. America, lower your standards. Average is what we do best. This is Patrick and Corey of BaseballMapper.com, and we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball, so get on the site and find a team near you today. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series, and in every episode I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1, I hope you guys enjoy. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com.